Hi, welcome to the next in a series of live webinars where we explore how you can use Minecraft in education. My name is Simon Johnson. I'm a former ICT and computing teacher uh, with several years experience in education. and I'm also a Minecraft global mentor. So in this session, we're going to explore um, what is Minecraft and what are the specific benefits of Minecraft Education Edition. We'll explore the technical requirements of Minecraft Education Edition and also discover how to remedy some of the most common issues in Minecraft when used in the classroom. So what is Minecraft Education Edition? Let's go to a place where everything is made of blocks where the only limit is your imagination. Let's go wherever you want to go. Climb the tallest mountains. Venture down to the darkest caves. Build anything you want. Day or night, rain or shine. Because this is the most significant sandbox you'll ever set foot in. Build a majestic castle. Invent a new machine or take a ride on a roller coaster. Play with friends. Build your own little community. Protect yourself with the strongest armor that you can craft. And fight off the dangers of the night. No one can tell you what you can or cannot do. With no rules to follow. This adventure, it's up to you. So, Minecraft is a sandbox game. Um, the best analogy I can use is imagine you have a giant sand pit and your raw materials are grains of sand. With those grains of sand and some water, you can build a small turret, you can build a small fortress, or you can create a life-size replica of a unicorn. The only limit is your imagination. In Minecraft, your grains of sand are blocks. These blocks have different materials, so some are made of brick, stone, dirt. But just like with the sandpit analogy, you can create anything you want. So you can create a rudimentary shelter to shelter from the elements. You can create yourself a nice lakeside log cabin, or you can create a life-size replica of Hogwarts. Again, the only limit is your imagination. So why Minecraft Education Edition? How does it differ from other games? And how does it differ from the vanilla version of Minecraft? So Minecraft Education Edition has been written from the ground up. So it's taken the original game, but placed in education elements. So it contains specific educational features like the ability to make notes with the book and quill. It has secure login using Office 365, safeguarding features so people outside of your organization or tenancy can't join um, students' world. Um, it also features such as um, code connections where children can actually code within Minecraft. And it's also got teacher um, tools to control and monitor the, the worlds that the students are playing in. It's also um, optimized for a number of platforms, which we'll look at a little bit later. So how do you get started? Well, Minecraft Education Edition is available on Windows, Chromebook, Mac, and iPad. And you can download all these from education.minecraft.net. Now, one question I often get asked is, do I need a high-powered gaming rig uh, in order to run Minecraft in my classroom? Um, thankfully, the answer is no. Um, Minecraft, um, as I mentioned before, has been written from the ground up based on the Pocket Edition, so designed for mobile devices and iPads. So it's suitable for most classroom devices. Um, if you want specifics, if you're using Windows, they, were, they recommend a CPU of um, Intel Core i3 or equivalent at 3.2 gigahertz. Um, and if you're using Mac or Chrome, the specification is for Windows and iOS, all they require is at least one gig of memory. The next common question I get asked is, well, how do I go about purchasing Minecraft? So there's a number of uh, routes you can uh, take, but 
before you do this, you need to have a eligible Office 365 account. Now, I've shared the link on this page um, where you can go online and check if you're not sure if your existing organization is eligible to use Minecraft. Um, now, don't worry, you don't have to record all these links. Uh, all these links will be shared later uh, at the end of this session. Uh, they'll also be available um, in the YouTube playlist. And I'll also share at the end of this session a free technical document that you can download that has all the links in this session. So once you've determined whether you're eligible, there's a number of things you can do. You can buy directly from the Microsoft Store for Education or there's also volume licensing available. So you might want to speak to your local authority or uh, software providers to see if they can provide you with volume licensing. But you may already have Minecraft and not realize it. So if you have a Microsoft 365 A3 or A5 plan, the Minecraft Education Edition is automatically included. So all you need to do is sign into your Office 365 account. And then from the left-hand menu, select Users. And then from the Users list, select the users you want to add or remove from the license. Add the relevant A3 or A5 license. And once it's assigned, they're ready to go. And then once you've done that, uh, you just need to make sure that Minecraft Education Edition is toggled on in your A5 or A3 faculty settings. Another question that asked is, well, how do I update Minecraft? So if you have the desktop app with Windows, um, Windows will automatically look for updates when a user logs into their computer. If you're using um, the store, um, the store will give notifications when the update is available. Uh, but automatic updates can be configured in your store settings. If you use an iPad, this will uh, update with iOS updates and you get notified just like any other iOS apps. Um, but with a Mac, you will need to manually install from um, the download page. Another question I often get asked is, well, do I need to unblock any ports or any websites for Minecraft to be able to work? So thankfully, Microsoft have put together a list of um, websites, URLs that you need to whitelist in order to play the game. Again, don't worry, you don't need to remember all these. They'll be available in the pack that I'll share at the end of this session. We just want to go through some of these in a little bit more detail so you understand what they do. So the most important one is the Startup Minecraft EDU services. Uh, because this allows the students to log in securely with the Office 365 account. The other important one, which worries a few uh, admins and technicians, is the star.xbox live and playfabapi.com. Um, I think it asks, does this mean that children will be able to then start playing Xbox games? Um, this is important because it allows access to the lesson plans and tutorials. So within the game, there are built in tutorials, free lessons, um, and worlds that they can download for free, and they need access to those websites to do that. One feature recently added to Minecraft Education Edition is the Immersive Reader. Some of you may be already familiar with Immersive Reader, having used it in Word Online or OneNote Online. For those who are not familiar, um, the Immersive Reader is a powerful accessibility tool. So it allows students to be able to translate text and also identify key vocabulary. So you'll need to um, allow these URLs in order to use the Immersive Reader within Minecraft. Minecraft also provides the uh, ability to code. So you can code with JavaScript, Python, and also blocks similar to Scratch. I have also get asked, uh, what ports do I need to allow? So the only port that you need to be uh, aware of is port 19132. And this is required for multiplayer and collaborative play. I thought I'd also use this opportunity to share with you some useful things that you should know about how Minecraft works and how it's deployed on your networks. So the first thing to be aware of is that students need to sign in with their Office 365 education account. The nice thing that with this is if a student is logged in locally on their device, it will automatically log them into Minecraft. 
students can also connect to each other's worlds or to the teacher's world to explore or work collaboratively. Now, when I first started using Minecraft, I was using the vanilla, vanilla version of Minecraft. Um, this caused a lot of issues. Um, the first being that I needed to contact the local authority to have several ports and websites um, unblocked. Uh, but also, uh, I had to create a bucket server. And this meant that server was public and potentially anyone could join in our world, which was a safeguarding issue. Thankfully, with the education edition of Minecraft, only students um, in the same tenancy can join each other's world. Something else you need to understand about how multiplayer works is a student will or teacher will load a world and then they can decide whether to broadcast that across the network. Once they do that, um, it then creates an ad hoc server on their machine. So there's no need for any uh, online servers. Um, now, Minecraft broadcasts via UDP across the network. Now, some schools block this. So if you're having issues with um, students not being able to connect to each other's world or to the teacher's world, that's one thing you might need to explore. Um, also, another safeguarding um, feature that's been added to Minecraft recently is join codes. So when a child or a teacher shares their uh, or broadcasts their world across the network, um, it automatically creates a code and children can only join that world if they have that four digit code. Um, there is a maximum number of 40 users in a multiplayer world. Um, I find now um, typically that you can get about 15 students working in one world uh, without any issue. And finally, um, when a child or teacher quits the world that they're in, any player that's um, attached to that world will automatically kick out and that session will finish. So here's those codes uh, I talked about. So when a child or teacher creates their world, uh, it'll automatically generate a four-digit code and only people with that code and on the same tenancy can join that world. Another thing you need to be aware of is where the worlds are saved. So by default, Minecraft will store the worlds in the teacher's or child's uh, roaming profile. Um, I've shared the link here, and again, I'll share this link at the end in the technical document. So as part of workflow, when we train teachers and work with students, we recommend that at the end of the session, um, if it's an important world they're working on, uh, so it's not a lesson that's built into uh, Minecraft itself, uh, they export their world um, so they can easily uh, export it to um, a shared drive, shared repository or cloud storage, and then import it um, the next time they come back to the lesson. You can back up a world easily by exporting, by clicking on play, and then view my worlds, and then go to the settings, select your world, and then you can export it, as I said, to um, a, a shared repository or cloud storage. And you can import it by either clicking on play and import, or just like a Word document or PowerPoint document, it uses the .mc world extension, and by double clicking on that, it will automatically import that world into Minecraft for you. Another feature you might need to be aware of is classroom mode. So this is a companion app. You have to download this separately. Um, you only need to install this on the teacher's machine. But what this enables the teacher to do is to manage those students that are working collaboratively so they can pause the whole class. Uh, they can teleport students to a focal point uh, and they can also uh, disable things like the chat. I thought I'd also use this opportunity to explore some common issues you might find when using Minecraft in the classroom and some common solutions. So probably the most common issue we come across in the classroom is that teacher or student can't connect to each other's worlds. Um, the most common reason for this is that students uh, or the teacher uh, haven't got the same version or, or the latest version of Minecraft. Now you can simply check the version by going to the home page in Minecraft and looking at the version number in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. Um, you can also check that the players are all logged in using the same tenancy uh, and check that port 19132 is open and that all those URLs mentioned before uh, have been added to your whitelist. So, how do you find out more? If you want to find out more, 
You can start by visiting the official Minecraft education website, education.minecraft.net. Don't worry, uh, all the links in this webinar uh, will be accessible in the YouTube playlist. You can also, if you use Twitter, you can tweet at PlaycraftLearn. If you want to get certified uh, and want to learn more about Minecraft, you can also join the Minecraft Education Teacher Academy. We've also recently released a new Minecraft education community for UK educators. Here you'll find education resources, news and updates for build challenges and be the first to find out about competitions. And you'll also get support from other educators and experts, including Minecraft mentors. And finally, if you like this series, why don't you check out some of the other videos and some of the other um, events in our Minecraft education series. Thank you for watching and we hope to see you in the next in our series of Minecraft education webinars.